All right, it's time for Up the Press. And Chris Kendewando, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, is joining us here in Lagos. Good morning to you, Chris. Good morning. It's nice to be back with you. Yes, nice to have you back to Niger. How does it feel to come back home? Well, east, west, and north, south. <laughs> No place like home. <laughs> Indeed, no I place mean, like home. No place like home. I couldn't wait to come back. Yeah, I, I noticed you were missing a wagon. You were missing a agege bread. You were missing a bar. Saw you online. Yes, you know there was an agege bread that I bought in Toronto, one of the shops in Canada. I couldn't believe it. But mm. um, you know, be. You know, be like the one we did for here. Yeah. I was saying a while ago, you know, Nigeria is all we've got, and we need to make Nigeria our dream come true. Our Nigerian dream come true. We need to make Nigeria home for all. It is. It's the best place to be. The only problem is our lives. And the most annoying part of it that most of them come to this other country, come to Canada, US, see this place. They enjoy the facilities, but why they cannot replicate the same thing at home is my problem. I don't yeah. know why. Yeah. And so many Nigerians are just looking to traveling abroad. Jaqua syndrome is everywhere. And because home no longer feels like home, right? It no longer feels safe. It no longer feels like a place where you can survive. It's, it's just so unfortunate. It's quite unfortunate. If you get to the airport and see the number of Nigerians living on the people and say, ah, at the rate we are going, this country, everything will help you. Mm -hmm. The rate at two people are moving, even to, even to countries that you least expect to move or to hear. It's quite unfortunate. People going to Libya, <laughs> people going to Iraq, people, people going, going to even countries that are at war, I'm sure. So that means some Nigerians prefer war torn countries than even their own country. I, I, I don't know what is happening. It is, it is real, and I hope that the president and the new government will put things right. But as it were, things are not getting better at all. Quite it is sad. Going to be bad. Niger is Niger. Niger is Niger. Okay, let's start with the Guardian newspaper. Cordoso faces Senate. Under FX pressure, loss of confidence. Well, Senate is uh, coming back to resume today. Um, and then uh, their first major assignment, indeed their very first assignment, is to screen uh, the acting CBN governor. And Cordoso has to deal with, you know, the Guardian has this thing with their big stories. And they've highlighted some of the things he has to do with. Here you have the picture of the dollar versus the naira. 1,000 naira to 1 US dollar. Very sad and very, in fact, just look at the picture. And so the, the, according to the Guardian, Cardoso will be dealing with the spiking inflation, the volatile exchange rate, $6.8 billion backlog, contentious 22.7 trillion naira ways and means advances, Ambiguous external reserves, falling bank adequacy ratio, high interest rates. Chris, let's start with this. Yes, um, he has his work, uh, his work cut out. And um, today, you know, there has been this story around um, some people raising their eyebrow that uh, he has resumed the table with having compact Senate uh, as statutorily uh, uh, mandated. By, yeah. Yes, mandatory. Uh, Mandated by the Constitution and also the, the CBN Act. Right? So, they're good enough. Uh, he was appointed, uh, nominated as it were, while the Senate was uh, on break. And uh, so, the Senate will be resuming today. And um, the good part of it is that it is only the Senate that has the power to confirm. It's not the whole National Assembly, it's not the Senate House of You know that, that this is your power given to the Senate to confirm certain individuals and government of church. So he, he uh, that of the central bank is one of them. So but today, uh, they will uh, talk to them. I will say they will talk to them, because that's what they do. Uh, I don't see anything uh, extraordinary coming out of it. So he himself, and uh, I think for all that the uh, governors uh, uh, screen today, and uh, um, uh, likely 99.9%, uh, 99.9%, .9%, their nomination will be approved by the Senate so that it will soon work. But there's so much on the ground uh, for him to chew. Uh, the principal for me is the sliding rate of the Naira, as you rightly mentioned during the course of your initial uh, uh, talk. Uh, the 
Naira is edging towards um, a, a thousand to a dollar. That is the, the first in the history of Nigeria since we get independence in 1960. It has never happened. In fact, I hear it, and, has, um, it has, I hear it has even got into a thousand one hundred, a thousand two hundred to a dollar. Well, I came back about um, three days ago from Canada. Mm. For this, it was hovering about nine fifty or nine forty nine fifty. So it has gotten to one thousand about one thousand. That is a that is a big problem, and that in itself puts so much pressure on so many things. Uh, the fact that, that as rightly mentioned also is the fact that we are not exporting more. We are not earning more. Um, and that in itself is putting a pressure. But that leads me to the fact that today, some more weeks back, we were told that the NNPC, NNPC got millions of dollars to um, one of the uh, uh, countries or facilities of, uh, yes, about, I don't know how much it was, uh, just to be able to break down the cost of that. And there's going to be an exchange of crude. Um, I'm sure you still remember that. But whatever happened to that money, till now, nobody has told us. The effect of that money, nobody has told us. I don't know. You know this issue of issue statement, uh, policy statement, so much sort, and the rest of them. I think it's becoming part of this government, and they just they have to be careful. Um, there have been so many uh, policy statements that have been made by this government. At the end of it, it comes to find out that it is not true. Um, I remember the one of uh, Dubai and the resumption of Emirates. Uh, remember, I can also remember we had this spokesman of the president also, so that um, President Ahmed Bolabmen uh, was the first African uh, leader to ring the Nasdaq bell. I've come to find out that that's not true. And so many others. So, if, 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 then with this, if this money, as they said, uh, was secured, the dollars, what have we used it for? How are we going to be use it to cushion the effect of the rising cost of the Naira against? But I think that will not have any effect because. Basically, you just have to export. The basic thing is you have to earn dollars. And how do you earn dollars? It's by exporting. Even currently, our, um, if you look at, uh, we're not meeting our uh, open quarter. Our open quarter is about 1.6 million uh, barrel of crude oil on a daily basis. But it has come down. The last time we had, which is about a week or two ago, is that we are losing about 450,000 barrels of crude oil every day. 450,000. So we're having a shop for about 450,000. That is a come to about close to about 30 million dollars. Of us, I don't, I can't do the math now. But <laughs> the once again, the um, the, uh, the governor of the central bank has a job cut out, and um, I hope that he'll hit the ground running and be able to uh, tidy up things and clear this. The naira is as worthless as this is what, uh, with all due respect, what um, Idia made coin. Um, in no, those days, uh, you remember the day of that Itami move, where the governor of the central bank was saying that this, um, this, uh, the, the, the money, the central, um, the money of the uh, Uganda money was like a uh, tissue money. And uh, <laughs> Itami got so, felt so bad about it that he has to the CBN governor to be executed. But that is where we are. It is quite unfortunate. And then let's see what happens in the next few days. And let's look at the monetary policies that we come that the new central bank will come up with, with the Ministry of Finance, not just the, 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 because the uh, governor of the central bank cannot do it alone. Both the president, his cabinet, and the central bank of Nigeria just have to do something to be able to stem this tide as it were. Yeah. Okay, so let's move forward. Um, court dismisses PDP Labour's petitions against Son Olu Hamzat. Well, I don't, were you expecting anything contrary? <laughs> I mean, no, you should know now. <laughs> I wasn't expecting anything to be contrary. Um, but I will continue the, I will continue to say it, and I've been saying it, and I continue to say it, that most of the problem that we had, post-election problem that we had uh, after the 2020 election, most of the problem will be hit on the on the table of INEC. That is for me. It's INEC. Mm. INEC, INEC, INEC. And I've been seeing all this judgment no pronouncement has been made against INEC. They will say, oh, you didn't do the, the, the parties did it. Let me give you a classical example. In Canon, mm. 165,000 votes were avoided. 165,000 votes. That is the vote, the total vote in some states that voted for governorship. Mm. That was voided. Why? Because the, the, the ballot papers were not stamped or signed. Mm. And now, 
Because of that, you the dotted that after the dotted that you now say that the APC won the election in Kano, not the NNP. And I ask myself, who do you blame? Are you blaming the political party? Are you blaming the governorship candidate of the NNPP that participated in the election? Or the INEC that did not do his job? So nobody is talking about INEC. Oh, our Niger we voted, yes, yeah. we, voted, we voted billions and billions for this last election. And look at what we got. The same thing with the presidential election. We are talking about this, uh, the uh, tribunal said, oh, we had a bad guy, INEC like, let them transmit uh, their result and the rest of them. But this wasn't what we were told by INEC before the election. And nobody is making any example of INEC. And that is the problem for me. Mm -hmm. I wonder why. I don't know. I don't know. Because I don't know who is playing this it. politics. Okay. The, uh, and that is where a lot of people are losing confidence in the judiciary. Mm -hmm. So what it is now that when the next election, don't depend on INEC, do as much as you can do to get yourself across the line. That is what is happening. Because if you look at the tribunal judgment, there are so many contradictions. You see this particular tribunal will use this criteria to... Uh, to deliver his judgment, the other tribunal we use, are they, are we say that we have different rules by which these tribunals operate. It is, I, I don't know what is happening, but my own is still INEC. INEC dropped the ball. And most of this blame, we put on, because if you look at the 2015 election, we didn't have this level of litigation. Mm -hmm. The INEC did a good job in 2015 to result the, the election that brought uh, Muhammad Dubai, which was why the president, the dead president then, put the said that. I'm okay with the results. Mm. I'm not going to file any case because he was satisfied with the process. He was the one that provides the process. So he was satisfied. But this particular one, see what is happening everywhere. They cannot, the way I'm not at INEC messed up the whole system and nobody's talking about it. It's, it's, getting, it's getting me so worried. Yeah, and uh, you know, many Nigerians, many Nigerians are worried with the way the judiciary is handling this whole process. And first of all, it's unfortunate that Nigerians are looking to the judiciary to be to determine who becomes governor and president it haven't gone to the polls in the first place and then many nigerians are not excited with the way the results are coming out from the courts the judgments are coming from the courts but then i remember what justice oputa said if the executive misbehaves you go to the judiciary if the legislative arm misbehaves, you go to the judiciary. But when the judiciary, the judiciary misbehaves, who do you go to? That's the question. The who you do go we to go to? NJC. NJC. <laughs> it is my constituency. Yes, okay. we have the NJC. We have the NJC. Yes, that is my constituency. Okay. We have the NJC. So if there's any, that, there's always a process. Even within the MBA, there's a process. There's a disciplinary committee that look at issues. If you have any problem with the uh, uh, with any lawyer, you have a right to be able to petition the MBA. They have a committee within the judicial the council, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, but who council. are, who are, who are those at the judicial council? No, no, no. It's, the, no. it's not a question of who are those at the judicial council because if you start asking that, then you ask of yourself who are those at the executive? So who are those? No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. Let me tell you. There are some people that are supposed to be Enlighten above us board. Some more. Yeah. Yes, there are people that are above board. Everybody cannot be corrupt. Okay, so if a, a, an institution has been established to look at issues, it's not all the judges that are corrupt. Of course, you've seen judgment, that instances you've seen judgment meted out on, on murder, you've seen judgment meted out um, on issue of, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, EFCC, ICPC, uh, name it, uh, corruption and the rest of them. So it is not. But what I'm saying is that there are still issues. And that is why, let me also put this, that is why the tribunals are not the final stop. You still have the Court of Appeal. You still have the Supreme Court. Like the PDP so and the Labour yes. Party, they're already appealing. Yes. And I understand yes. the body of Vivor of Lagos State is also going to appeal. So yes, yes he, has, he, has the right. he has the right to appeal. Yes, he has the right of appeal. And those are what, so those are, there have been so many, let me, uh, let, let's look, let, let, let me tell you this. Let's take, for example, a classical example is what happened on Osho State. Adeleke lost at at the tribunal. When he went to appeal, when APC went on, uh, when, um, uh, when um, uh, was it? No, no, no. I'd like one at the tribunal. Then APC went to, uh, to the appeal, he went to court of appeal. APC won at the court of appeal. That's at the Boyega, the correct minister. 
Mm. Then from there, they, they, they Adeleke um, um, appealed to the Supreme Court. And they won at the Supreme Court. Yeah. So you can see those three processes. Yeah. So he lost, he was first, he won first, he lost at the second, and he won at the third. So that happened. So let us not just conclude, let us wait and see what uh, will happen uh, at the Supreme Court at its situation. So, but so far, so good. The judgment, the way it's coming, uh, there's a lot of distortion here and there that most mm. Nigerians don't even understand what it is. Yeah. Okay, so let's move forward. Um, let's go to East West Road. It's still abandoned, according to reports on this front page of The Guardian. East West Road still abandoned hellish 17 years after. What can you tell us about you, that road? You, you need to, uh, Menno, you need to go to that road. Um, you, are part of, you are part of the salsa, so now on a road. <laughs> but I will tell you for <laughs> I will tell you for free. Billions and billions of naira spent on that road. Mm. Recently, about two months ago, I was in Aquaibo, Aquaibo State. I was in Uyo, and for whatever reason, I missed my flight back to Lagos. I have to now traverse from Uyo to Portaco to, to get a flight, and I had a first-hand uh, knowledge of that East West Road. You will be shocked the state of that road, mm. and I've got. Why is it that the successive government over the years have not been able to put that road? Despite the billions and billions of naira that has been on that road, the Minister of War, Federal Minister of War, the um, uh, Minister of Niger Delta, also even the, the NDDC, these three agencies, these three government agencies, how come that they've not been able to put, get this right? So I am shocked. So, but we are still back here because I know that even during the Good Lord Jonathan uh, era, um, some this thing we are giving, um, some instruction we are giving uh, by the government of Gulo Jodhana to get that road fixed. But it is still obvious that that road was not fixed. Mm. And it is still the deployable state of that road. And that is a road that transverse most part of, um, of, the, of the Niger Delta, as it were. And you can be, you, you'll be shocked. The level of road. So I don't know what is happening. I think uh, the current minister and Fashola, uh, former minister of works. Mm. Um, 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 fashion lab also promised that that road will be completed. Mm -hmm. But in that, I don't know, is it that the money that was put up for the road was embezzled by certain individuals or was it not enough? There were variations and I knew that on a, on, on, a, on a yearly basis, they were doing all sorts of variation and variation and variation. But at the end of it, that road is still terrible. I don't think that they've completed up to 40% of that. And you know the topography in the south of the south south. It's not like building a road in Kano or building a road in Lagos. You have to do more because of the uh, topography, because of the soil, because of the fact that that the, the, the south south is more water locked. But the first thing is how caught that we have been hearing the east west road for years and nothing has been done to it. I hope that this government will be able to uh, uh, handle that and make sure that. Uh, it is a key trunk road that links not only the south south, but other parts of the country. It leads the south, it leads the southeast, and from the south it leads it, it comes to the southwest. So that road is very key. And that is not only that, there is a lot of insecurity because of the deplorable state of that road. A lot of kidnapping is going on on that route. Because most of these kidnappers wait around to the bar portion of the road. Once you break, they just they pick you up. So um, it's not only about the road now, but also the level of insecurity on that road. Most people try as much as possible to avoid it totally. I can tell you for free. But the state of that road is still up to entering Port Harcourt. In fact, inside Port Harcourt, the tail end of the road entering Port Harcourt is so terrible that towards the NNPC area and I don't know what they call those areas. So, 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 I mean the refinery. That state, the state of that road is still very, very terrible. Nothing to show for it. Nigeria roads. Okay, so let, let's move on, because when we begin to talk about this, the more we talk about it, the more depressing it gets. I mean, we remember during uh, Desani Alice in Madiake, when she was Minister of Transportation, remember that Aura Road, when she landed her place in her jumpsuit, and I was, I was on a TV program on the morning, the morning after that visit to that Aura Road, that Benin access. You remember that report? I do, I do. Uh, I remember, uh, I remember that, that. I remember that. I felt so enough. proud. Uh, I felt so yeah. proud. I said, finally, this road is going to be fixed. And my co-presenter that morning was saying, don't get your hopes high. 
I said, no, 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 you don't understand. Did you see she wept? She was so touched, she was moved. Things are going to change. Yeah, they, they, it's quite unfortunate. But uh, good enough, um, a large session of uh, the uh, Lagos, um, Shagamo, or uh, Bini Road has been fixed to a large extent. No. I, I'll, I'll tell you that properly, a large extent. That's a, a large portion of that road, except from some areas, especially the Undo area, mm. areas of that road, but most of the part has been fixed. Then, same thing with Lagos, Lagos Ibadan Expressway. The Lagos Ibadan Expressway is practically fixed. I can no. tell you that you can make, yes, no. yes, except for the session. Yeah, because the last the, time I took that session, route, yes, the last time I took those routes, I think that was in, two, three years ago, the roads were horrible, weren't so good. No, they were horrible. But for four years, I was on that road. Mm -hmm. That was where I, I, read, I, I read my look in the back. For four years, I was on that road consistently. But I can tell you that that road has been practically fixed. You can make the Lagos a bad road within 15 minutes now without to and fro. Yes, Thank I God. can tell you that for 15 minutes. Yes, that's a good one. Some so the good only news. area that is, the only, yes, the only portion that we have, I don't know whether they finished, uh, I've not been on that road for about a month now, is the OPIC end, the beggar OPIC end of that route. But nearly you pass OPIC, you enter, you just going towards Mowe and start going towards MFM, then all through to Shagamu uh, 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 Junction up to Ibadan. Perfect. It has been done. And so uh, I want to see that same thing replicated along the um, Portacourt Enugu Road Express. Mm. Even the Owere, um, Owere Onisha, some portion of Onisha Owere is bad. Um, also, uh, I'm at that, um, is, uh, the funniest one that is coming out, I don't know how true is good, this is going to be, is the Minister of War promising us that by the time they finish the Abuja Lagos Express Road, that is going to take four hours to make Abuja to Lagos. You know, I don't know how they do, how they're going to do that too. I don't I don't know the magic that the Minister of War is talking about. But I hope, I pray, it's not another audio promise. Mm. Four hours from uh, Abuja to Lagos, that would be the ninth wonder of the world. It will be good to experience it. It will be it good to be. experience it. it. Okay, it so let's be. move to the Independent, the Daily Independent newspaper. And it's leading with Labour. NLC, well, fuel subsidy crisis. NLC takes final decision on indefinite strike today. The riders here, again, Lalong begs labor not to paralyze economy, says FG has already resolved one of their demands. Yes, uh, the issue of NLC. Uh, I'll tell you that most Nigerians have lost faith with NLC, and that is the fact. The fact is, uh, remains that also the government have decided, have practically uh, divided the labor union in Nigeria. You can see that the TUC is now singing a new, uh, a different a song from the NLC. When NLC uh, was to be back on its two-day warning strike, TUC was not part of it. They said they were not going to be part of it. TUC yesterday said they were embarking on a one-day strike in Lagos. NLC was not part of it. So it has been the divide and rules um, system which the government has implemented to make sure that the two unions, the two major unions in Nigeria, the TUC and NLC, um, don't seem to be in synergy with itself. And that in itself is going to affect what the... Chris, is it the government this time? Because I remember I read an interview that was see for granted, and he said they were not carried along by NLC. That one in strike, and that was why they were not part of it. They were not told. They only heard of it, you know, on the news, like every other Nigerian. So they, they didn't join them because they were not informed. Is it today? That, is, it today is it today TUC and NLC have been going to negotiate the federal government? And you believe that... I don't believe that, that crap. They cannot say they are not carrying around. The fact remains that, as they, don't forget, they met with him uh, with, when the meeting was called. It was only TUC that attended that last meeting that TUC attended. Mm. NLC did not attend. Yeah. There's already division. It's the divide and rule system. But the fact is that you look at it. If you look at some of the issues that NLC is talking about, well, Jermaine, good. They're talking of palliatives. You say you are going to introduce, you talked about the number of trucks that was going to be pushed out. And give it to the states and also the transport union. How many months now? None. You are talking of palliatives. They now load three, four uh, lorries of rice and send to states. May no. Four, uh, four trucks, five trucks of rice as palliatives. In some local government, over 20, 30 people were sharing one bag of, uh, one bag of rice. 
You can see that. Go to social media. So what we are, we are, why are we deceiving ourselves? The pictures that have been emanating from the states, the one it, from Nasara was the peak. Was you see, you saw that one from Nasara? Whoa, that was the ultimate. So what are we talking about? So it is obvious that the the federal government is not sincere in this, and I've said it time without number. All this issue of palliative and no palliative for me is not not necessary. It's a waste of fun. Mm. It was like what the Buhari government did during the uh, during this uh, during this period with the Minister of Humanitarian uh, uh, Affairs. We had trillions and trillions of Nigeria, uh, Nigeria money we had spent at our, our counter post. Where the minister told us that they were feeding our children that were told during the COVID. And my own, I, I was feeding mine. I'm sure you have, you were feeding yours. Nobody, and they were giving us a second, excuse me. This money could have been challenged in order. And if we to make it funny, are you also aware that they are still paying for sub subsidy? Are you aware? We treated it here. We're are you as well aware, despite the fact that they say that subsidy has known that subsidy is people. So that is the level of insincerity on the part of government. So I, to a large extent, believe it, but the way a manner the NLC is going about it, I don't think it's going to work. You can't be saying, oh, we are going to do a two day strike today, and tomorrow we are going to go on for this strike. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you mobilize Nigerians initially, They're you call it over. Like At the end of it, mm -hmm. they're beginning to sound like a broken record. and. Almost exactly, losing. exactly. So nobody takes them, nobody takes them seriously again. Yeah. Already Nigerians are beginning to doubt their sincerity and their tenacity. And so this repeated back and forth is beginning to make it even worse for them. So they, they, they've lost a lot of grounds and a lot of respect. And I don't know how effective whatever they do now is going to be. It's, it's why it will not even be effective is that it's you know that most Nigerians, close to almost 70, 80 percent of Nigeria, ex they are living on a daily basis. Yeah. They are not employed. How many people are employed? How many people are in the, uh, 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 in the civil service? So when you are talking about you are mobilizing, who are you going to mobilize? Is it the to tomato Yabo said that says tomato at the market? <laughs> or yeah, Sigira that says Amala that makes some money from her restaurant on a daily basis? Is it the person you are going to mobilize? Or are you going to mobilize CKN as a person that works for myself? You want to mobilize me that I should come on. So it will be very, very, very difficult because Nigerians have to make a living. And for that, the level of poverty in the country is so terrible that some people can will not be able to feed themselves if they don't go out on a daily basis. So it is it, so it might just be some certain ministries, parastators, and whatever that will be shut down. But look at the last one, the two-day warning strike. The banks were open. The banks were open for the two days. The banks operated. So what are we talking? The airport was open. It was within the period that I traveled. The airport was operating as if nothing was happening. And so many other sectors. The transport union did not join. Mm -hmm. So there was transport everywhere. So what are you talking? So what are we? Lupin did not join. Mm -hmm. So they were lifted for it. The petrol the petro stations were open, were open. So what are we talking about? I think they should find a more realistic way of engaging government and making sure that they will be able to um, come through and be able to come through with some of the promises they made to Nigeria. But the issue of this strike, indefinite strike, there's no strike in Nigeria that can last more than two days, I can tell you. No strike. No matter how well coordinated it is, it's not possible. Wow. Just as we're talking about, look at the picture right in front of the Daily Independent. TUC protests take over uh, Lagos Park's prescription of R-T-E-A-N. That's the picture you're seeing there. T-U-C protests yesterday. Yes. You know, I told you, you know, in my initial intervention, I told you that T-U-C was supposed to have uh, a protest yesterday in mm -hmm. Lagos. And it was just T-U-C. And I told you that PM, um, NLC was not part of that. So you can see that the, the two unions are now divided among the state. This one is going in one direction. This other one is going on. That in itself is playing to the government's hand. And the government will be very happy with what is going on. Because it is only when both of them are united as a force that they can be able to effectively drive this issue of strike or negotiation with government. But a divided house, the same thing happened with ASU. You saw what the government did. When the issue of ASU lingered and lingered, what did the government do? They registered another union. And that was the end of that. So the government now used the industrial court to cement whatever action they had. At it. And that was the end of ASU and whatever strike that ASU was. ASU was now forced to resume because the other union has resumed lectures in the universities. So the same Sikaros and uh, stake approach is being used here. 
And it is now for the labor to win back the confidence of the people. If the two unions can come back together and be able to sit down and harmonize their policies and actions, then they can make some kind of bet. The way they are going about it now, may not forget it, not to come out of it. All right, let's move on. We have fire gutted. Why fire gutted Supreme Court building? Spokesman. He says it didn't affect presidential election petition materials. Page six is where details of that is on the Daily Independent. You saw that picture and all the angles that have uh, been given to the fire. Chris, which of the <laughs> angles did you hear? <laughs> I mean, all the angles that I heard was the same thing that I heard. <laughs> Both, of us, <laughs> Both of us are journalists and we are the same, <laughs> are the same, are the same source when they hear this thing. Okay. But uh, seriously, um, I personally would say there is nothing new in what happened. As a fire, mm. maybe today now. Nah. I, I saw you really loud the fire in Abuja. The one at federal secretariat, the mm. one as uh, uh, damn list of uh, finance and so you know. But the fact is that because of the skepticism Nigerians have yeah. over leadership, most often than not, we will always bring some level of you know political uh, skepticism to some of these issues. Now Nigerians are believing. Oh, they have burnt all the fat. You know that is. <laughs> <laughs> Even for the PDP has brought a political angle and say, no, this fire is not is just not real. There's something about it. This must be proved. Blah blah blah. But the, the, the Supreme Court have come to say, no, no fire was affected. That, that it was just a, some part of the Supreme Court and it was brought under control and the rest of them. But that is a but we have seen instances like in the ministries and where you see a ministry a under proof. The next thing you say, oh, fire in the account session. Mm -hmm. They burn all the fights. I know that Nigeria will not keep records. Oh, well, thank God today, we, you, it's, things are no longer in hard copies alone. You have soft copies. That, so. most, of those, most of those ministries still have it in, they still have it in file. Forget. They have a, these people have a way of frustrating the system. You have to say that a, a, a secretary has to carry fire physically to go and meet or get to sign and mean it. You know, they always mean it. Oh, mean yeah. it from one to two. You know the way they do it. In to the DCG, 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 So all those systems still operate within the federal and state system. It is only some states that are able to digitalize their system that they have backups. But although some of them are already doing it, now, they're still going about it, they go do it. But the fact that let us not read any means to what happened at it. could have been a, a NEPA spike or fire, um, electricity spike. And it has happened. Just yesterday, you saw what happened just in the motion area mm. where the two children were electrocuted. Oh, no, I didn't hear just that. Please, what oh, happened? Oh, yeah. Yes, the two children, I said they had a, they, they came back from school and just went and turned on to try to turn on the technician and they were electrocuted oh, in motion area. Goodness. Two of them. Their mother is still trying to, they're still trying to get the mother back. So I think that was an electrocution. It's one of the papers. I don't know. I think it's a bunch of one of the papers. That's um, quite that was a very sad. Very yes, sad. That's a very, very sad. Yes, very, very sad one indeed. Well, voice data services may be disrupted as states threaten shutdown of telco based uh, stations. I wonder what that is about, Chris. Now, that's now. Now, that's. That means they're having, they're, they're having issues. Uh, we, you know, that is what you call the right, uh, right of way. Uh, most of them are not. You see the telecom, you see those fiber that the telecom um, companies lay. When you, are, you see most of the time, you see those roads being caught. Yes. You've seen them. Yes, laying off, uh, laying off cables. Even on the expressway, you see laying off cables. So that is what you call the right of way, which most of the time, the uh, NCC and the Ministry of uh, Communications, and most of these states enter into and the, and the telecommunication companies. Most of the time, they have to pay tax on some of those things. So, and also, most of the states, erect, in all the states, you see the telecom companies erecting mass. You'll be seeing a lot of mass, even within your own area, MTN, low, uh, whichever one, Airtel, and the rest of them. The government, state government, collect taxes from most of these telecom companies. So, there must be the possibility that some of them have not been paid. And for that, for that reason, they just feel that the way to go, just as what they have been doing with some of the banks, they say some of the banks don't pay their, their rates. So what they do is that they wake up one day, carry their people, go and seal up the, um, the premises of the system. But the fact remains that the issue of double taxing is always a problem and it's killing most companies in Nigeria. You pay the federal government, you pay the state government, you pay the local government. 
and some other one that you don't even know. May know you have your car, you have gotten your, you paid for your, what is it, your license and the rest of them. And you drive from here to Abeokuta, you see some people who just carry the nail and this thing and just put be, be, by your tire and say, where is your permit or whatever? And they ask you, you where is the task for you? You show them, you say, no, this is for Lagos. You have, you have not paid for the state. I just came here on something. And they, they say, no, you must pay. And before you know it, they will deflect your tires and results. So that is, I think, part of the problem we have to look at is the, the, the task regime in Nigeria. I have to be able to harmonize it so that we don't keep businesses. Yeah, the president they, did say that he would deal with this issue of multiple taxation. It's part of the things he had promised. I, I don't know how effective that has become, if it's taking effect, but yeah, it's one I, of the promises I, made I by this uh, new president. No, but you still don't blame them because also the, the state also has some serious financial mess. So they have to try to dig in um, to get more from the internal generating revenue, IGR. Mm. That becomes a problem. Next, well, that does not necessarily mean that Nigerians should be overtaxed. That does not mean that companies should be overtaxed. Because whatever you are doing and overtaxing them, they still put that back on the consumer. Yeah. And that's why most of the prices of goods and services are very expensive in Nigeria. If they, is, if they carry a, a bag of tomato from, let's say, from Kano to Lagos, at every point, they get They'll to be pay. If not talk of the one police collect too. Mm -hmm. Police collect, you know, they, are own, they have their own tax that is not remunerated. They'll be collecting at every point. Mm -hmm. the custom, NDL also on the road. They also collect their own. And some other people I don't want to mention, which I'm personally involved with. So those are the issues that we are having present. So, but we have to find a way of rejigging this thing and making sure that this multiple tax station does not kill businesses in Nigeria. It is not, this is not how it is done in other parts of the world. Okay, just before we go, because time is no longer on our side, the Nation newspaper, it leads with probe report will expose rot in CBN, says federal government. Uh, the writer there, Cordoso deputies face Senate screening today. Dam's disaster, 16 charged to court. Nigeria, a Niger junta, okay, is French with Rao. You have... Above the master tribunal win victory for all, some will loot else Lagosians. 98 court of appeal panel sitting on 1,209 post petitions. Access holdings post 940.3 billion naira gross earnings in the first half of the year. And all right, so a lot on this front page, but time will not permit us to touch them. You, you've already uh, analyzed some of them because, of course, some of these headlines are on the other headlines that we've touched. Thank you so much, Chris, for your time this morning on Of The Press. Thank you very much for having me. Do have a wonderful day. A happy birthday to my little ones. Thank you. Very I'll tell them. them. I'll tell them. Chris Kendewandu, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, has joined us here in Lagos on Of The Press. Stay with us. We'll come and take our first hot topic fashion and technology you want to know what it's all about because we have a fashion designer in the house <laughs> 